what is sleep apnea? In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to try to do my best in explaining what sleep apnea is, uh, what are the causes of sleep apnea, what are the treatments, and what are the symptoms or side effects um, of not treating sleep apnea. So I'm gonna to try to do that the best I can. If I don't answer any of your questions, please leave them in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up and a like if it's useful. So how do we breathe? So we breathe by creating negative pressure in our lungs and having the atmospheric pressure flow into our bodies, right? And we have muscles along the throat, along the pharynx, which is throat, and it keeps the throat open so we are able to breathe. Also, when we're standing up or moving around, sitting around, our tongue's not kind of falling because of gravity into the back of our throat. And also the muscles that keep the tongue in place are active when we're awake. Now, when we fall asleep, a lot of those muscles are going to relax. And for those with sleep apnea, those muscles relax too much. And oftentimes the tongue will fall into the back of the throat, uh, obstructing the throat or the throat or pharynx has too much fat tissue, for example, and because of that negative pressure, it's closing up a little bit as well. It's gonna create less air going into your lungs, and ultimately it can create um, you gasping for breath and not being able to breathe throughout the night. This causes people with sleep apnea to wake up, whether consciously or not consciously, and kind of uh, gasp for air. So if you see your partner doing something like this, like they're snoring and they go, <gasps> like kind of like that, like a quick little jolt, and then, and then they fall right back asleep, they have, most likely sleep apnea. You don't have to wake up and be in a panic uh, necessarily. You can just subconsciously wake up. And if that's happening throughout the night, you have so many health issues that could happen with that because sleep is so important. So your increased risk of heart disease and diabetes, um, stress, fatigue, the list goes on. We're gonna go into that after, but it, it's really important that it gets treated. So the causes of sleep apnea are going to be a few. The first thing could be obesity. So people who are obese, typically men, because men carry a little more fat tissue in their neck, uh, mouth, and face, are going to have larger tongues or increased fat deposits around the pharynx. Obviously, it can happen with women as well, but because of that, it's going to do a number of things. The first thing is the fat tissue along the pharynx is going to take your throat, if this is your throat, and it's gonna kind of compress it a little bit. So it's not gonna be as wide of a throat opening. In addition to a relaxing, larger, heavier tongue with a now smaller airway, the tongue is going to fall back against the pharynx and close that airway off. Okay, so that is the first cause. The second one could be receding jawline or just small jaw. People with smaller jaws or a jaw that recedes a little bit backwards, uh, the tongue, just the way the tongue is mounted on the jaw is gonna fall back a little bit more uh, when that person's relaxing causing them to obstruct their airway as well. Aging, so with aging, oftentimes you're gonna have aging in the muscle tissue around the pharynx. So just like uh, you know, your muscles are holding your pharynx, this is supposed to be your throat open. With weakening muscles and that negative pressure of breathing, it can kind of collapse a little bit as well. So that is one of the reasons. Uh, and then at last, swollen tonsils through an infection or just some other reason. Now. That is why a lot of people see sleep apnea occurring when they are heavier set and older because the pharynx with the aging muscles isn't able to keep the throat open uh, and then you have extra fat and extra tissues uh, collapsing the throat even more. So that is why. Now, oftentimes it's the throat in combination with mainly the tongue, the tongue relaxing too much and falling back and creating no way for the air to flow down. Okay, so the next part is issues and side effects. So one side effect of sleep apnea that's not really talked about uh, often because it's, it seems mild, but it's kind of interesting is nightmares. Sleep apnea nightmares are definitely a thing. If you ever wake up and you're gasping for breath or your dreams aren't happy and they're kind of stressed out dreams, oftentimes uh, if you suspect you have sleep apnea, that's gonna be one of the symptoms because your body is always in a state of stress. Because your body doesn't know if it's gonna get a deep breath next, if it's gonna get a breath at all next, it's throughout the night always in a state of panic and that's gonna to lead to nightmares or just bad feeling dreams throughout the night. The next thing is daytime fatigue or sleepiness. Uh, if you feel irritable, fatigued, sleepy, or just not super energetic throughout the day, chances are you might have sleep apnea. The next thing is high blood pressure or cardiovascular issues. Because you're not getting good sleep throughout the night, and your body's always in stress, your hormonal system is going to be kind of working out of control to figure out what's going on. This is gonna to lead to hypertension or high blood pressure. Then we got headaches, uh, mood changes, 
again, all kind of around the same thing. These increased hormones um, in your body, your body trying to deal with stress uh, is going to create anxiety and depression uh, throughout your sleepy and miserable day, perhaps. Now, the reason why they're all kind of intertwined is because, simply put it, sleep is supposed to be the most relaxed part of the day for your body. It's for your body to drain out all the toxins, to relax, to make sure your brain is at the correct hormonal level for the next day. It kind of resets your body. But people with sleep apnea who aren't getting a good night's sleep, and not only that, are getting stressful night's sleeps, often more stressful than the stress in the day, creates a huge twist in the programming of the human body and creates so many issues like I talked about, uh, high blood pressure, hypertension, etc. Now, another side effect is impairment of cognitive function and neurological diseases. Uh, so two part, you might have brain fog kind of throughout the day and you might not be able to focus as much or just think about problems and solve those problems throughout the day as easily. And also in terms of diseases, people with sleep apnea have a higher chance of getting these diseases such as Alzheimer's or dementia because of just years of chronic sleep deprivation. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is obesity. So people often think that you get obese first and then you get sleep apnea because they see uh, people who are overweight often have sleep apnea, but oftentimes it's reversed. So mainly you have sleep apnea, you have a jaw or muscles in your tongue that relax a little bit too much over the course of your life. I know people in their early 20s with sleep apnea, okay? Over the course of your life, 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, you're never getting good sleep. Your body is stressed out every time it sleeps, just a little bit, even when you're younger, you might not be able to notice it, but it is. Your body releases cortisol, which is the stress hormone. This hormone uh, makes you gain weight, right? And so you might not know why you're gaining weight or why you are easy weight gainer because you just gain weight easily, right? It could be because of your sleep apnea. Now, once you get a little bit overweight, now you have a little more fat tissue here. Now you have a little bit bigger tongue and now you're really snoring. Uh, now it's super obvious and you might think that you gained weight first, but in fact, oftentimes a lot of people have mild sleep apnea their whole lives, which eventually leads them to gaining weight and then getting to the point where it's very noticeable, like they're snoring really loudly. Part three, treatment. So the main treatment that people talk about is CPAP machines. This is a Air Sense 11, which is made by a company ResMed. And then we have another ResMed Air Mini here. Uh, this is a travel size machine. Both do the same things. You could use this one uh, all the time if you wanted to. It just doesn't have a humidifier chamber like this and having a humidifier chamber is way more comfortable. So people just use this for basically traveling. Um, so a CPAP machine, how it works is it blows air. It's kind of like a glorified fan, uh, a medical fan, if you will. It goes through a tube like this that connects onto the machine. This tube goes into your mask. So this is a ResMed mask, it's a P10. Uh, and this is where it connects to your nose, it goes underneath like this. Okay, and that airflow, that constant airflow is gonna take your throat and if you blow pressurized air, it's gonna force that throat to stay open all night long. So that's basically what a CPAP machine does. Now there are options other than a CPAP machine. A lot of people are scared to use kind of a mask all night long because they think it's uncomfortable. So there are other options. You can get a mandibular advancement device or an oral appliance uh, as some call it. And that's gonna reposition your jaw a little bit forward. Um, so your tongue, and what your tongue is connected to, your lower jaw, is moved slightly forward so it's not gonna hit the back of your throat. So it kind of looks like a mouth guard, but it positions your jaw in a way where your tongue is not hitting the back of your throat. Uh, an older option is a tongue retaining device. I know they're a lot more rare than your typical oral appliance, but it's gonna bring your tongue kind of almost out of your mouth, keep the tongue from hitting in the back of your throat. Perfect. Um, and then you also have hypoglossal nerve stimulators. So these are uh, machines or devices that are implanted into your body. And basically it's a small device that's put kind of in the area of a pacemaker. It's gonna sense, so there's a few different parts to it. Uh, one part is the sensing lead. So that's gonna sense when you're gonna take your next breath. And then you have the stimulation lead. Uh, so the stimulation lead leads into the throat uh, near your mouth and it's going to stimulate the tongue so that the muscles underneath the tongue contract and move the tongue forward. You're obviously taking the tongue and taking it off the back of your throat creating that area for air to flow. So every time you are about to take a breath, the device senses you're gonna inhale, it sends a little stimulation to your tongue, your tongue kinda moves and then air can go 
uh, down your throat. So that's basically what a hypoglossal nerve stimulator is. Now the implantation of this device does require surgery. However, uh, surgery like this is kind of considered minimally invasive. It's definitely not something huge, okay? So you have CPAP, different oral devices, or a hypoglossal nerve stimulator. Those are kind of the ways to treat uh, sleep apnea. Um, that's about it for this video. I hope uh, you're able to more confidently talk to your doctor and kind of understand what sleep apnea is. I hope this video gave you a better understanding if you kind of suspect you might have sleep apnea um, of, of what it is. If it did, give us a thumbs up. It really does help, especially with the YouTube algorithm. And definitely consider subscribing if you like. Uh, that's all guys. Take care.